Hi, I'm Randy Wise. I'm the curator here at the Fremont County Pioneer Museum in Lander, Wyoming. We are in the Wind River Basin, which was the uh, site of many an interesting historical episode. Uh, one of our most uh, infamous episodes was the death of Harvey Morgan. So the Wind River Basin and the, uh, this area was contested by a lot of Native American tribes. The Shoshone people who are currently here today were here then, but there were many other Native American groups in the area as well. The Lakota, the Cheyenne, the Blackfeet, the Arapaho, uh, all traveled and hunted in this area. So it was a, a, a desired place to be. It was also desired by white immigrants who were coming here for gold. They discovered gold in 1869 at South Pass, uh, in the South Pass area. And uh, of course that brought thousands of uh, white people to the area, which by and large did not set too well with many of the Native Americans. Now again, the Shoshone were primarily peaceful under the leadership of Chief Washakie, but other Native American tribes in the area were not so peaceful. The gold boom uh, was pretty widespread throughout the area and there are people looking for gold everywhere. At that point there is no town of Lander or even a Lander Valley, but there is a valley down here. And many of the uh, miners would travel from South Pass down through Red Canyon and into this valley. And one uh, trip was being done by Harvey Morgan and two of his companions in 1870. They were on their way down from South Pass, down to claims that they had in the valley. They actually passed a uh, small troop of cavalry that were stationed in the area. The cavalry warned them, there's activity, Native Americans are, have been seen and they have been hostile. Harvey and his uh, companions said, no, we're fine. We've got firearms. We're not worried about anything happening to us. So the army headed back up to South Pass and Harvey and his companions headed down into the Lander Valley. At some point in their journey, as they were heading down into the valley, uh, Harvey and his companions were attacked by a group of Native American warriors about seven miles south of the Lander Valley. Uh, apparently there was quite a stiff battle that took place when the bodies were discovered uh, later. Uh, many shell casings, many arrows, uh, quite a fight had taken place. To this day, it's not entirely clear who the attackers were. Uh, certainly there were a number of Native American groups in the area. The Lakota and the Cheyenne say it was the Arapaho. The Arapaho say it was the Lakota and Cheyenne. Likely a combined group because many of these Native Americans were allied with each other uh, in opposition to the Shoshone and the Whites. So it's very possible that uh, any number of uh, warriors from different groups were the attackers. In any case, Harvey and his companions were slain after a, uh, a fierce battle. They were discovered actually in the evening uh, after dark by the same cavalry troop that they had passed on their way down into the valley. The troops were heading back down, uh, saw an overturned wagon and uh, smelled gunpowder in the air so they knew something was going on. A couple of the soldiers crept up uh, in, the, in the dark to see if they could find out what was happening or if there were any hostile warriors left. And one of them put his hand in a sticky pool. They realized pretty quickly what that pool was. So they retreated and went back to the cavalry unit. They retreated for the evening, thought, well, let's not push our luck. We don't know if anybody's still around here. And clearly the battle is over. So they retreated. The next morning they came and found three bodies, uh, all three of the uh, miners. Uh, Harvey Morgan being one of them. They were all uh, dead, <laughs> for one thing, badly mutilated, but Harvey was the one that stood out the most because he had the uh, wagon queen pin driven through his skull. Uh, so, pretty gruesome way to go. The bodies were hastily buried by the cavalry near the location, which in later years came to be known as Dead Man's Gulch, and is still known as Dead Man's Gulch. It's just outside of Lander, so you, can, you drive right by it, and there is a small marker uh, commemorating the, uh, the death of Harvey and his companions. Uh, the story continues, though, and has some interesting twists. So the bodies were moved from there to Camp Augur, which was actually in uh, the valley right where we're standing now. The uh, military opened a post here called Camp Augur again to uh, deal with Native American issues and troubles. 
the bodies were interned at Camp Augur. Now, Camp Augur was abandoned oh, about five years after that, and the town of Lander replaced it and grew up around the camp. Harvey and his companions were not exactly forgotten, but nobody really knew exactly where they were buried. Well, in the early 1900s, as Lander was growing, they were digging a water line, and lo and behold, they dig up three bodies, and one of whom has a wagon spike, a wagon hammer driven through his skull. And a couple of the people that were still living in Lander were actually present uh, when the bodies were discovered, and they knew instantly what the story was and who that was. One of the things they decided to do was to reinter the bodies, which they did at the local cemetery, but they kept Harvey's skull. Kind of a gruesome thing to keep, but the early pioneers in this community were very conscious of their history, and they thought they'd been talking about starting a museum for some time anyway, and they thought, here is a great artifact. We have a skull, we have a story, uh, and so they kept Harvey's skull and it becomes the first artifact in the first history museum in Wyoming, which is the Fremont County Pioneer Museum. And even today, Harvey is on display at the Pioneer Museum, the first artifact uh, in the museum, and will probably be here for quite a while.